Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. I am Olafunle Kasumo. You have probably come across or even bought something from a slot shop before. I mean S-L-O-T, slot. One of those mobile phones and other electronic gadget shops across Nigeria. Over the last two decades, slot has grown to become a well-known brand in the country. Its founder is Namdi Ezigbo, who is an engineer, entrepreneur, and the chief executive officer of Slot Systems Limited. Namdi had a tough background that could have stopped him from becoming a success story, but he overcame the odds. You might have observed that books written by successful entrepreneurs in Western countries are very common and easy to find. But those written by successful Nigerian or African entrepreneurs are sadly not so easy to get. Fortunately, this is changing. Accomplished indigenous entrepreneurs are now writing their stories and sharing their business philosophies in books. Namde, the founder of Slot, has written and published this memoir titled Entrepreneurship The Slot Way. The book uses his business experiences to teach his ideas on business and entrepreneurship. Namdi's story is really inspiring and reminds us that even in Nigeria, dreams can come true against all odds. He joined us to discuss his book and things related. Enjoy this. Engineer Namdi, thank you for hosting us and I mean, welcome to Channels Book Club. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, let me read something here that will be the basis for my first question. Okay. Um, you wrote in page 15, whenever I get to talk about my sojourn into business, I always tell people that I never planned to go into business. But necessity, they say, and as my story illustrates, is the mother of invention. There was not much in my past that indicated I would go into business. Perhaps the closest I got to doing business was selling bread for my mother as a kid. I sold it on the streets and enjoyed doing so. I would carry a full tray of loaves and return home with an empty tray and money in my pocket. That was the closest I got to business or trading as a child. I mean, anybody seeing you now will not know you were selling bread <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so it was a bit of a challenging childhood, right? Of course, of course. I come from a very humble background. Um, and just like the story indicates, I actually helped my mom and my parents generally to sell bread after school just to raise money. Uh, well, that was very helpful, but uh, that didn't in any way teach me about business anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like trying to do something to help the family, not necessarily to learn about business. Okay. Obviously, that shows that uh, my upbringing was very humble. Well, very humble. Yeah. yeah, and then you wrote somewhere here where after secondary school, you couldn't further your education because there was no money. So for four years, you couldn't move beyond secondary school because there was no money. Yes. Uh, after my secondary school, I actually got admission to study engineering, uh, but I couldn't uh, proceed because there was no enough money to take care of that, um, uh, take care of the tuition and, and other expenses. So I had to work for two years. I, interestingly, the first two years I worked and I saved money. You know, funny enough, my dad was the one that was saving the money for me. So <laughs> every month when I end my salary, I would give my dad 50% of my salary to save for me, just to enable me to raise money to go back to school. So unfortunately for me, and very interesting anyway, at the end of the first two years, I got admission. So I asked my dad that, uh, you know what? I just got admission. I need those money that I've been saving, that you've been saving for me. <laughs> so he said, oh, you know what? I've spent that money to take care of <laughs> family upkeep and, <laughs> and some basic, basic things at home. So I had to work another two years. So that could be the reason. And that is actually the reason why I spent four years after my second school education. So the first two years, the money I saved was spent for the family. And then I, spent, I had to spend another two years to raise money to actually pay for my first year at school. So uh, I, 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 I think this 
part of the story actually goes a long way to say that you can actually push to get whatever you want. You, you don't need to really uh, depend on, uh, you don't need to say, oh, because the situation is not uh, favorable, I can't do this. So you can actually look at those ones you can change, to change them. So some things you can change, but other things you can change. So I, I think I pushed a little bit above my limits just to uh, make sure that I got myself into a higher uh, education. So you have come a very long way. Uh, yes, so from, from a very humble beginning. And I, and I think that has actually helped to prepare me for a time like this. Okay, um, now let's, let's dig into this, this book, Entrepreneurship, The Slot Way. Hmm. One of the um, most obvious things in your book is your determination to explain the fact that entrepreneurship is different from business. Okay, you, so I'm going to read something you wrote here you know, to um, illustrate what I'm saying. You wrote here in chapter one that there are many business owners in Nigeria, but few entrepreneurs. Most people who brand themselves as entrepreneurs in Nigeria are not. Perhaps the problem is how entrepreneurship is defined and understood. Can you explain that a little bit more? This book uh, predominantly is uh, addressing this, uh, is um, trying to throw more light on what uh, people should do in terms of how to scale up their businesses, uh, is uh, addressing the issues that has to do with how you can grow from being small to becoming uh, big. All right, so I am very convinced that uh, entrepreneurship holds the key to wealth creation, um, value creation and job creation. And I also believe clearly that in Nigeria, we have so many business owners, all right? More than what we you can actually find in most uh, African countries. All right, so, but the challenge we have is we, we don't have people who have been able to acquire the necessary knowledge or training that will help them scale up to become entrepreneurs entrepreneurs that will create wealth for the society, entrepreneurs that will create jobs for the society, entrepreneurs that can make life better. So, so this book is basically addressing that. So there are so many business owners, uh, and I'm saying that you can scale up, you can grow from being a small business owner to, uh, to an, an, entrepreneur. an entrepreneur. Good, so a business owner for me here, or a self-employed person for me is, that man or woman who is basically doing business for the purpose of making money for himself. You can afford to make money, pay your bills, uh, take care of your family, immediate family, but you are, not, you are not really touching lives in the society. You are not really creating wealth in the society. You are just solving your immediate problem. That is not entrepreneurship. That is, for me, is just, you're just doing business, you're just a business owner. So I am trying to say that we should grow beyond mere business owners. We should, we should expand our businesses. We should grow from this level to a higher level. And that's why I feel that this book is actually very good for people who are uh, doing businesses and who want to scale up. So the challenge I think people have in Nigeria, particularly in Africa, is the fact that they see business as something they can just do and raise money. They see business as an opportunity to make money. All right. Business is not about making money. Business is about doing good and doing well. Doing good for the society and doing well as well. So if you want to do business to the point where you, be, you become scalable and you can impact a society, you need to get trained. And this is the big challenge. So in this book, I am saying that business is a profession. You don't try business. Business is a profession, just like any other profession. So every profession requires you to go get trained. And so, if you want to become a medical doctor, you need to get trained. If you want to become an engineer, you need to get trained. The same thing is applicable when you're talking about business. So, you need to get trained. And so, we, most people feel that business is something you can try. Some will tell you, you know what, I've tried everything, let me try business. No, you don't try business. And so, business is a venture. You venture into business, all right? And the word venture means risk. It means going on a daring journey. Nobody goes on a daring journey without proper preparation. Yeah. 
And so if we get trained properly, all right, in, in business, we're able to do business to the point where we can scale it, to the point where we can create wealth, to the point where we can create jobs for our society. So I am more concerned about how people can scale up their businesses. And that's why I'm trying to differentiate a mere business owner and an entrepreneur who is so concerned about wealth creation, who is concerned about society, who is concerned about, about jobs, job creation. And, and we just can't depend on government to create all the jobs. So we can do as much as we can. And that's why there's provision for small, medium scale enterprises. So this book addresses that uh, uh, issue around um, scaling up, around expansion of businesses. Your vision from what you wrote here was to work with a big oil company. Yes. The big oil company is around. Yes. You had studied engineering. Um, so, but you didn't get a job on time. You then became innovative by going to learn from a, a friend of yours who was running a computer business, yes. you know, and became his apprentice. I, I found that very interesting. Tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, uh, you know, in Nigeria, uh, and uh, most young people want to, uh, after graduation from school, they want to get a good job and take care of their immediate families, uh, train their siblings, and also kind of uh, take care of their, of their parents. So I, I think it was uh, uh, very responsible of me to have graduated at that time, and so I needed to get a job. And for me to get a job that will, that will empower me to take care of my siblings and my parents means that it has to be a well-paid job. So I, I was so attracted to the oil company. Because they you are really So, so of course, uh, you, you expect to get a, a seven-digit kind of salary. All right. So, I, so that was what I did. So I tried to, to earn myself a, 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 good, a good job, but that didn't happen. All right. So it was quite difficult. So after spending two years or so, I thought of starting something on my own. Not necessarily to do business, but just to start something to earn a living. So my entrance into business was born out of necessity. So I needed to do something to survive. And so there was nothing I, I could do at that time because, uh, of course, to start business or to uh, go into trading, you need money. So there was no money. I had no uncle or dad who had money slashed into any account. All right. I had no experience or knowledge. I had to get one. And so I had to meet a friend who at the time had a, a computer engineering outfit. And so he allowed me, because we, we've been friends even from uh, school days. So he allowed me to spend six months with him. So that allowed me to work as an apprentice. All right. And got my fingers dirty <laughs> and actually learned computer engineering. That was your schoolmate. I was my schoolmate, yes. So I worked with him as an apprentice. It took, I, some, I was, it took some humility to do that. Oh, of course. I, I was at that point where I, I needed to do everything possible to, to start a living. And so I needed to uh, acquire that training. So I, I was ready to acquire the training. I was ready to learn. And I was quite humble. So, and he found me very useful because uh, I was very useful to him right there at, at, the, at the office. So and I was very, very determined. So that helped me to acquire that technical knowledge necessary to become a computer engineer. So, so that helped me. So I was able to start from that level. And um, I got to a point where I needed to start on my own and I had money, I had no money. So I had to share a bookshop with a guy who had at the time a bookshop as well. So that was how I started. Now you used your book is titled Entrepreneurship the Slot Way. You know, one would have initially thought, okay, this was essentially the story of your company, okay. SLOT. Slot yes. <laughs> okay. But you used SLOT here as an acronym, S-L-O-T. Yes. Okay. Um, S being solutions, yes. then L being learning and leadership, yes. then O being opportunities, and T being technology. How, how did you come about? Why did you come about that? Well, uh, I'm not trying to use uh, the name slot because I, I want to make the, the, the name popular. Uh, I just wanted uh, an acronym that can help me communicate my business concept. All right, and uh, I believe that business must consider uh, 
uh, solution. You must be a solution provider. You must be able to find solutions. You must be able to find solution for you to say, oh, I'm a businessman. So if you say you're a businessman, they're going to ask you what need are you meeting? What solution are you providing? And I'm also saying that entrepreneurs or business owners must be people who are willing to learn at every point in time and who are willing to lead. So you can't be an entrepreneur if you are not a leader. So they are very uh, interwoven. So I, am, I also came up with the L, which is leadership. And then the O also is the sensitivity in opportunities. So you should be sensitive when it comes to opportunities. So you cannot claim that you're meeting needs and you're solving problems if you've not been able to see opportunities. So I'm also saying that entrepreneurs are people who are sensitive to opportunities. And then the final one, T, I'm also saying that T stands for technology. This time and age is a time where you can use technology to meet needs of people. You can use technology to create value. You can use technology to reduce cost of doing business, approve, uh, achieve efficiency, and do much more than you can actually do. All right, so I'm saying that every entrepreneur should use this acronym as a way of scaling up their businesses. Mm -hmm. And so if you're able to understand this acronym, S-L-O-T, you're able to do much more than you're doing right now. So my, my book is actually targeting people who are already in business. All right. It's, it's, it's trying to address the fact that you can scale up your business. Many business owners in Nigeria and Africa are operating on the level I call operational level. They are doing businesses at the operational level. So the guy who has a shop who sells uh, spare parts, motor spare parts, has only what I call operational scale. So he understands how to do his business. He understands the processes. He has the brain to drive it. But he cannot scale up. So that doesn't stop this guy from making money, buying a car for himself, building a house here and there. But if this guy understands what it takes to scale up his business, he can do much more. He can employ more people. He can do society more good. So that's what we're saying here, that people should not be limited to operational skill alone. And so there is need for you to acquire managerial skills. So what does managerial skill does? It helps you to know how to reduce your cost of doing business. It helps you to achieve efficiency. It helps you to achieve competitive advantage, all right? It helps you to become uniquely different from every other one in that industry. And so you can also move to the next level, organizational skill. That, that one also helps you to manage people, all right? So even in ministry, wherever you find yourself, you need these skills. So people are not knowledgeable about these skills, and this is the reason why they've been deprived of the opportunity of expanding their businesses, of moving from one level to the other. So I am saying that the book addresses uh, uh, how people can move from one level to the other, how people can scale up their businesses, how people can formulate strategies, how people can, uh, from nowhere, become very innovative. You've got some pretty interesting um, illustrations in your book okay. that, that convey some of the messages you are trying to pass across in the book here. So, for example, here, um, the picture of this guy who is, who has to make a decision yes. on the path, yes. the entrepreneurial or business path. Again, you are saying here that they are distinct. Yes. And, and then you've already tried to explain the differences. And then, of course, there's this one <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. who is scratching his head um one is thinking about value wealth and jobs the other is thinking about money 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 which again is a message you're trying to pass across that entrepreneurship is not just about money 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 yes. so so uh, entrepreneurship is uh, not about you it's about society and if you look at our world today all the people that have impacted our world are people who in one way or the other, have solved problems. They have solved societal problems. They've been able to solve problems that we can say, oh, thank God for this. So every time you solve a problem, you get economic return, economic values in return. For example, uh, in 2006, when we discovered that Nigerians were carrying two telephones because of poor network services, we had to introduce a dual SIM phone. And so we needed to partner with a Chinese company to make this uh, possible. So we brought in techno into Nigeria, all right? And so the advent of techno in Nigeria actually helped to introduce a dual SIM phone that people could rely on. And today, so many people 
are enjoying the service of Technoform. Jobs have been created. Wealth has been created. So for us, we were able to meet the needs of our society. We were able to meet the need of the Nigerian people. Today, the Technoform that, that was founded in 2006, a techno business or Technoform that was introduced in 2006, has impacted on our society, has provided jobs for the people, has created wealth. So it is natural for the, uh, for the owners of the brand to enjoy the dividend of you know, creating value. So when you create value for society, when you solve societal problems, you naturally would get economic value for doing good and doing well. And then we're not limited to just doing business, even in our workplaces. So if you are the chief accountant, you are the CMO of your organization, you should also aspire to create wealth for your company, create value for your company. So as your company begins to do well, all right, it's also natural that you get promoted and you can also become the CEO of that company. And so if you're the CEO of a company and you're concerned about making money for yourself, you are not doing society any good. So it is a message I'm passing on using my book to the Nigerian people, to the African people, that we should limit ourselves to money-making machines. We should limit our businesses to money-making machines. We should see opportunities to touch lives in our society. We should look at opportunities to impact our societies. And when we do this, the society, the country itself, the continent becomes a better place. Mm. Uh, which books have inspired you? Uh, so many, so many books, so many books. Um, I, I think one of the books that, that has uh, inspired me is uh, Good to Great. Oh, okay. Uh, Collins. 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 Jim Collins, if I'm right. Yes, Jim Collins. Uh, and then also, there's this book I read written by a, a Harvard professor. It's called um, The Founder's Mentality. And then also written by the same author, um, uh, it's called, um, his second book is called um, Profit from the Core. Mm. All right? So, so these are books that have actually inspired me. So uh, you read a lot of business books? I, I read a lot of business books. And, and I think the most important book is the Bible. All right? <laughs> the Bible is, for me, the most important book, book uh, ever. Uh, in terms of strategy, you, you can always find it there. In terms of... Um, uh, being prepared, getting equipped. So when you open the Bible, beyond the spiritual aspects, you see strategy oh, and, course, and you course. see business. Uh, of course, <laughs> yes, of course. So you, you, you see a lot of strategy and how it's been, been uh, uh, um, you know, formulated and also implemented. Well, that's a whole lot and mostly all in here. <laughs> thank you, engineer. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks. thanks. thanks for your time. Thanks. inspiring isn't it there's more of that and hopefully we'll show some of what is left of that interview including a reading very soon you may want to look out for that this is where we have to stop today as always we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen i am Olaf Kunle kasumo remember one great book can change your life bye bye